Welcome back to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Andrews Island. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. John of the Cross, priest and doctor of the church. And I'm your host, Deacon Francis Fallier. Our Lexio Divina, our divine reading, is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 11, verses 11 through 15. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who gave the priest St. John an outstanding dedication to perfect self-denial and love of the cross, grant that by imitating him closely at all times, we may come to contemplate eternally your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our gospel passage. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds, Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent are taking it by force. All the prophets and the law prophesied up to the time of John, and If you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah, the one who is to come. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. In today's Gospel reading, according to St. Matthew, we hear Jesus speak high words of praise for his cousin, John the Baptist. John had quite a unique role in salvation history, which sets him apart from all others. He was the one to announce the long-awaited arrival of the Messiah. John is the last in the line of the great Old Testament prophets. These were the men and women who spoke in God's name, pointing the way for God's people. These were the men and women who, at times, denounced the behavior of the Israelites and, at other times, pointed to a great destiny ahead for them and for the Gentiles as well. John is an Old Testament figure but he forms a kind of bridge between the Old and the New Testament. He was executed, he was beheaded before the mission of Jesus was completed. The New Testament or the New Covenant was sealed with Jesus' blood on the cross. Unfortunately, St. John the Baptist never lived to see it. And even with all of his high praise for the Baptist, Jesus says, even the very least in the kingdom of God, the kingdom inaugurated by Jesus, even the very least is in a more privileged position than John the Baptist. John could not share in the abundance of life that was released through the death and resurrection of Jesus as every believing Christian can do. We hear at this point of the gospel passage some strange words. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent are taking it by force. The meaning is not immediately clear, but it seems to refer to those who are using violence to prevent other people from entering the kingdom and at the same time, pulling away those who have already entered. In the context of St. Matthew's Gospel, this could apply to those Jews and others who were bitterly opposed 
to Jesus and his message, and who both tried to prevent people from entering the Christian community, or tried to make those already members to defect. This we know from the letters of St. Paul was happening in many of the early communities and it is still happening today, sometimes through violent persecution, sometimes in a much more subtle way, like peer rejection. It's not cool to be Christian, right? John the Baptist is then described by Jesus as Elijah who is to come. We know that the prophet Elijah did not die a natural death. He was carried off to heaven in a chariot. However, it was a Jewish belief that someday he would return to leave this earth in a normal way and join the dead in Sheol. But the important point was that his return would be the immediate prelude to the arrival of the Messiah. In calling John Elijah, Jesus is clearly pointing to himself as the Messiah. And so Jesus says, he who has ears ought to hear. In other words, those with right insight will know what Jesus is saying. They will listen carefully to his words and recognize Jesus for who he really is and accept him as Lord and Savior, the Son of God, God himself. We might conclude by reflecting and contemplation that the role of John the Baptist is one that each follower of Christ is called to fulfill. It is up to us to prepare the way for Christ and his vision of the kingdom to enter the lives of people. In the words of the Canticle of Zechariah, the Benedictus that we pray every day, a hymn said in every day of the church's morning prayer, As for you, my child, you shall be called a prophet of the Most High. That pertains to us. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. We prepare the way of Jesus in other people's lives. And so this begs the question for each of us. Are we walking in John the Baptist's shoes? Are we preparing the way of the Most High? Something to ponder. As usual, after our closing prayer, we read the scripture passage again, contemplate its message, and concentrate on a thought that comes to you through the Holy Spirit, either through a verse or even just a small word that touches you, and then ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you, how you may spiritually grow closer to our brother Jesus in friendship, something our Heavenly Father deeply desires. Let us complete a divine reading with a closing prayer. Let us pray. Having contemplated your divine word and embraced the sacred truths you teach us, complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in all ways. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, please click the like button for us. And if you haven't already done so, please ring the bell and click on that subscribe all button and help support our channel. Share these links with others and pass them along to your friends and relatives as well. God bless you all. Have a great day. And join us again tomorrow for another Lexio Divina, a divine reading of God's sacred word. Pax et bonum omnibus. Peace and blessings to all.